Jeff Masters joins us now from Michigan. He's a writer on extreme weather and climate change for Yale Climate Connections. Thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. Well, we've seen and felt the effects of some of the extreme heat and drought. Talk to us more about the impact on drinking water. We saw the example with crops there in England, energy and even transportation. You know, this summer of extreme heat and drought has really brought to the fore the main threat that climate change poses to civilization, and that is drought. Because drought affects the two things we need to live, food and water. And certainly the shortages of water we're seeing are emblematic of what we're going to see more of in the future. We're really going to have to manage our water supply much more stringently and really adapt to the new climate that's already being seen this year. Jeff, in the United States, some regions are experiencing two extremes, the drought, as we've mentioned, and also uh, flooding. For example, the state of Texas uh, the last week or so. Describe what is happening there. And um, as we mentioned, in the U.K., they've had some extreme heat, but now they're also seeing heavy thunderstorms in some areas. Talk to us about these type of swings that are happening in some of the same places. Yeah, what's going on is that we have a hotter climate now, and we have to understand that heat is energy. So when the weather patterns happen to bring sunny skies and fair weather, now you're going to see a hotter sort of climate because there's more heat in the atmosphere. Conversely, when the atmosphere happens to bring us storms, those storms are going to be more intense and drop more precipitation now because a hotter atmosphere will evaporate more moisture from the ocean, about 7% more moisture per degree centigrade, and that moisture is going to feed heavier downpours. So when you get a shift in the climate pattern from suddenly from dry to wet, you're going to see a whiplash event where you are experiencing a drought for a few weeks or days, and then all of a sudden it's replaced by, boom, you get one of these extreme weather events. Texas was under extreme to exceptional drought all summer, and now they're seeing one in a thousand year rain. So not at all out of line with what we expect in a hotter climate. And you talk about those rains, we've seen five thousand year floods in the U.S. in less than a month's time. Is that the new normal? You know, you have to understand that we've only seen what? Well, about 1.2 degrees Celsius of global warming. That may not seem like much, but the average isn't what we need to look at. It's the extremes. And you can see a doubling, tripling, quadrupling of the extreme events just with that small seeming shift in the climate. And that's what's going on now. We're going to continue to see a sharp increase in those extremes as we go forward. And that's a severe challenge to our adaptation. Jeff, what does this mean for the type of weather we can all expect to see this fall and even this winter um, here in this part of the world? We're t uh, technically in hurricane season. We haven't seen much of anything yet. But what do you see here in the next couple of months through the end of the year? Yeah, in the Atlantic, the hurricane season has been very unusually quiet, particularly since we're in a uh, La Nina event where you typically see more hurricanes. And there's no indication yet that the Atlantic is going to wake up. We're experiencing very dry, stable air there. And, you know, surprises are happening all the time in our climate. And it may well be that we'll end up with a quieter than average hurricane season. But things can just change on a dime like that. All of a sudden, we could get a big shift in conditions where... Uh, now we're seeing a, a crazy year like last year or 2020. So uh, expect the unexpected because that is the new way the climate is now. You can throw away all the old climatology books. We're in an entirely new environment now where we're going to start seeing unprecedented things with great regularity. Jeff Masters, thank you so much for joining us from the U.S. state of Michigan. We appreciate your time. You're welcome.